you're a shawl knitter or if you've ever wanted to be a shawl knitter, this video today is for you. I'm going to be going through every shawl that I have ever knit. Hi, welcome to Virgin and Lily. My name is Amanda and this is my channel where I talk about all sorts of crafty goodness. Like I said, today's video is going to be all about every single shawl that I have knit, at least from my memory, every single shawl that I have ever knit. Obviously, angle looks different today. I am standing. I figured that would be the easiest way to show off all these shawls since they're all relatively large and I'm gonna have to stand anyway, so I might as well just stand the whole time. Before we jump on in, there are a few places you can find me on the internet. The main one is birchandlilyfiber.com. You can also find me on Instagram at birch.and.lily. Everything else I talk about today will all be linked down below in the description. My Ko-Fi is there, my Instagram is there. Um, I've also added a new Google form for anyone who has any video suggestions. If there's something you've been wanting to see and I haven't done it before or you've left a comment and I forgot about it, I now have this Google form down below in the description. You can submit any ideas you have for YouTube videos there and then I have them all in one place to consider when I'm looking for something to film. So. That aside, I think we're ready to jump on in. There is no particular order with these, mostly because I don't remember, and when I first started knitting, I did not take good notes. Um, I also cannot guarantee I will know the yarn, but I do know all the designers, so we'll just go in no particular order and jump through everything I've knit shawl-wise. So, first one here. This is the West Facing Wrap by Lindsay Fowler. I do know that I test knit this one, um, and it is knit out of Knit Picks. I think it's either a DK or Worsted. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you the color either. But it's just a really beautiful, classic, cozy shawl with this neat lace faux cable. Now, I didn't do this, but I do believe on all of these points here where the cable lace ends, there are supposed to be tassels. I chose to omit the tassels. And I just have this big squishy wrap. So yeah, it's, it's a large one. Um, Definitely more of a winter shawl. I tend to wear shawls more like a scarf, so this is how I would probably wear it. Yeah. I actually just lent this one out to a friend to wear in her engagement photo shoot, so it's got some love. I can't say I am the hugest shawl person at the moment, but I have lots. <laughs> I don't know. They're fun. So yeah, this one, like I said, was a test knit. I couldn't tell you when I finished it. Next in my pile, this, believe it or not, is the only shawl pattern I've ever knit twice. This is also by Lindsay Fowler, and this is the Luminaria shawl. This is the second one I knit, um, and I believe this yarn is from Hooker's Corner. It was her Anne of Green Gables advent one year. But this pattern is so much fun. It's mosaic color work, so you're never using more than one strand of yarn at a time. You're slipping stitches. And then it has a really pretty pico border. But yeah, this was a really fun knit, so much so that I cast on a second one. I love how the colors are used within it. This one I did um, alternate the colors on it pretty rapidly so that they were used a couple different times in the shawl where when I show you the other one I knit um, I used every color just once. The next shawl I have in the pile here does not have its ends woven in. There's a reason for that. If you watched my Q&A video you would know <laughs> I at one point in my life got in a very large car accident and I literally finished this shawl the day before the car accident, didn't weave in the ends, but had it blocking. And then I've never had any desire to uh, touch it ever since that happened. So it has sat here with its ends not woven in, 
and I don't know if I ever will weave them in to be honest. This though is the Sun Showers Shawl. It's a pattern by Inis Sang. It's definitely like a, a thinner crescent type shawl with this really neat, I guess you would call that lace. It's like a, are those baubles? I think they are. I think I just didn't know how to knit baubles very well at this point, and so they're quite flat. So I definitely know this was knit sometime in 2018, probably March. I think it was in March. I couldn't tell you what the yarn is, though. This also has a pico edge to it. Yeah, it's a really skinny, long one. You could definitely wear this as a scarf as well. And I do know... There is a mistake somewhere in this right, right at the beginning that it's not very often I leave mistakes on things. I can't even find it now, to be honest, but there is a mistake somewhere in this right at the beginning. And this is one of the few times I left it and didn't rip it out. I am not a huge Stephen West um, pattern lover, but when he came out with the shawlography and I saw the very beginning of it, I was intrigued. And so I started... I don't love it so much <laughs> anymore. Once I got past that first section, I was like, oh, this is getting a little bit crazier than I thought. But I do feel like I learned a lot with this, so it was a fun knit in that way. It's huge. Again, I couldn't tell you what yarn I used for this. I did knit along with the make along, so whatever year Shawlography came out is when I knit this. It's, it's busy. <laughs> there's, there's a lot going on. I feel like I maybe would have liked it a little bit more if I had chosen slightly more muted colors. But when I had first seen it with these really neat stripes here, I wanted to have some fun color. And then moving, obviously, throughout the rest of the shawl, it started to get a little bit crazier, which I should have known. It's Stephen West. Um, I am glad that I have participated in one of his make-alongs. I think it's a cool thing to say, but will I wear this? Probably not. <laughs> but yeah, I learned a lot with it. I think it was really neat. And I have it now. I know I'm not talking a ton about any of these patterns, partially because I didn't want the video to be super, super long. Also because I'm not 100% sure on some information for these, but if you have a question about any of these shawls, leave me a comment down below in the description and I'll do my best to find you the information if I can. Like, I could dig through my stash if there's a specific skein of yarn that you're, like, in love with. I could probably dig through my stash of scraps and figure out what it is, but I don't have great notes for all of these. I really didn't start taking notes for my knitting until this year. So a lot of these, it, unless I talked about them on the podcast, I might be able to find information that way too. So like that shawlography, if I looked back through my podcast notes, I could probably find information on it. But yeah, I was not a great note taker until this year. So any questions, please let me know. This next one, I also test knit for Lindsay Fowler. I am a avid <laughs> Lindsay Fowler test knitter. Um, this is from her... Oh dear, what's it called? Salt and Timber. It's right here beside me. Um, it's from her Salt and Timber book. This is called the Cape Lookout Shawl. I love this one. So the fun thing about it, obviously it's got beautiful, beautiful lace on it, but on one side of the shawl, you just hold a skein of fingering weight yarn by itself. And on the other side, you hold that skein of fingering weight with a surrey or a mohair to get this really pretty marled, half and half look. This one I do tend to pull out in the winter. It's a really nice tuck under my jacket type shawl and it's quite neutral so I find it matches with a lot of stuff so I really should pull this one out and keep it handy since the weather is getting a little bit colder again. It was so much fun to knit. I love knitting lace. It's just hard <laughs> with shawls because your stitch counts get so large near the end and it's quite easy for me to get burnt out but 
doing this as a test knit definitely gives me some motivation to get it finished. So this was a really fun one. I'm not sure what the gray is, but I do know that the Surrey in here is from Sugar Plum Circus Yarn, and I believe it's called Sea Glass. Next up here is my other Luminaria shawl from Lindsay Fowler. This one I did knit along with during Advent. I believe I knit this in 20... It was either 2019 or 2020. And so I used my Advent calendar for this one. And then the main color... I'm not 100% sure what it is. I think I do have notes on this one though. It's somewhere. I knit it while I was podcasting so I should. Anyways this is my Advent Luminaria. So you can see that I used instead of alternating every couple rows the colors I used every color for two sections of the plaid motif. But everything about this one is the same as my other Luminaria. It was just such a fun knit and I love how it looks so I decided to knit another one. I should say as well, this shape that you get on the edging of the shawl is all done by blocking. So when you're knitting it, it looks really straight and flat and you do have to pin it out to get that shape when you block it. Okay, uh, this is the only other Stephen West item I have ever knit. And I'm looking at it and I can't tell which is the front of it. <laughs> um, I think this is the front. This is the dotted Rays shawl. I knit this, I think this is the Farmer Daughters Fibers Kit that was made for, this is going to be a tangent, it was made for What the Fade from Andrea Mowry, but I had bought a couple kits because I wasn't sure what I wanted to knit my What the Fade out of, so this was just sitting around. Um, I don't think any of the colors were named, but yeah, this was a kit for that. It's from Farmer's Daughter Fibers. I bought this ages ago, probably like 2017. And then I finally knit this up a few years ago. This is huge, but it's so lightweight because it's knit out of singles yarn. So it's not terribly overwhelmingly warm. And I feel like the colors in it are muted enough that they kind of feel neutral. This is definitely a tamer Stephen West pattern. Like, I guess you could, you could go wild with colors with it, but I don't know. It fades really well. I think it's really pretty. And I did have a fun time knitting it. It's pretty potato chippy. Um, there's not tons that you have to think about. You start here and you kind of just, at this point right here, and you kind of just increase and keep going. But yeah. It was a fun knit. I, yeah, just really wanted to use up this fade and do something different, and this was the pattern I ended up picking. This shawl is a fun one. Um, I don't think it's ever been blocked, because at the point when I knit this, <laughs> I didn't know about blocking. This is the very first shawl I ever knit. This is my entrance into hand dyed yarn. This is my entrance into Andrea Mowry and I think this was like kind of around when I had first found Ravelry as well. Um, I don't even know what, let's see, what's the front of this? <laughs> I don't even know. I think this is the front. This is my Find Your Fade by Andrea Mowry. It is my very first ever knit shawl. I remember being so scared to knit this and so scared of the double yarn overs that I didn't even do them. I just did single yarn overs in the whole shawl because I tried the double yarn overs and they freaked me out. I have no idea what any of this yarn is. I don't even know if I have any of it anymore like in my stash of scraps but yeah I just do I wear it ever? No but it's really sentimental. I remember going to my local yarn shop and having them help me pick out my yarn for this. The fade kind of sucks. <laughs> but yeah, it's just something, there's something really cool and sentimental about this. So I really should block it and just see what happens to it when I block it. I feel like it would get 
even bigger than it is already though. I didn't gauge swatch for this. Let's be honest, I don't gauge swatch for any shawls, but I definitely didn't gauge swatch for this one. I just knit it and somehow it happened. I remember knitting it on horrible, horrible Michael's needles where the cord kinked up really bad and they were just awful. But yeah, I don't know, it's kind of cool. This is, this is where the journey I feel I'm on now started. <laughs> where I, I started finding patterns on Ravelry and really going wild and not just knitting hats and dishcloths and I don't know, really cool. So yeah, this is Find Your Fade by Andrea Murray. Next here is a, another Lindsay Fowler test knit. This is the Bronte Sister Shawl. I loved knitting this one. Um, I do know it's knit out of Woolberry Fiber Co. yarn. I couldn't tell you the colorway names, but I'm sure I have notes somewhere. And it has, which have kind of got squished where they've been packed away, but these huge, massive tassels that I made. But yeah, I did test knit this one. It's beautiful. I had so much fun knitting this. I don't remember ever getting bored, <laughs> which with the amount of stitches you have on this at the end is pretty impressive. I think I wore this to my first fiber festival I went to, if I remember correctly. Or second, first or second. The first one might have been a shawl I'm going to show you shortly that I wore, but this was a really, really fun knit. Yeah, it has this beautiful, like, cathedral-looking lace, and I love how it alternates back and forth between different sections on it. So you've always got the one just straight stockinette side, and then the one side with the pretty lace, and then it ends off with this really cute floral motif. There's some ribbing. Really fun knit. And yeah, I'm positive all of this yarn is Woolberry Fiberco, but I couldn't tell you what the colorways are. They might be really old collective colorways, if I'm being honest. But that is that. This next one, I think, is the second shawl I ever knit. This is called the Bendy Arrow. The designer is Charlotte Bory. I knit this one mostly on a road trip to Montana with my family. I remember it being the very first time I could ever knit in the car without it getting car sick. I don't know how I managed that, but I did. So I knit literally the whole however many hour drive. And it was really, really fun. This was the first time I'd ever done short rows as well. And I'm pretty impressed with how those look. Even looking at them now, I think I did a pretty good job. I do remember this came out small. Um, likely because I did not know how to keep an eye cord loose and this is edged with an eye cord the whole way. Also probably because I didn't gauge swatch, but no idea what this is knit out of. This is like pre-podcasting days, pre-insta- huh? No, it may be way, way, way on the way back of my Instagram. But good luck scrolling back there because I have like thousands of posts, <laughs> but yeah. This was a really fun knit. I knit this shortly after my husband and I got engaged. Yeah, bendy arrow shawl. This next one is from my short foray into designing. I had, <laughs> this is, um, I wore this a lot and now it's done some funky things over time with blocking. So I don't even know what's going on with this. Um, but this I had called the Spun Sugar Sunset shawl. It's a crescent shawl with, there's some lace in there, just some straight garter. I finished it off with a pico edge. And there are some short rows in there as well, if you can see that. Yeah, I think the pattern's still in Ravelry. <laughs> this is from ages ago, but um, yeah, I don't even know what the yarn is for this. I'm sure the pattern says, but it was fun. I definitely am not made to be a pattern designer. I am made to be a yarn dyer and a podcaster, <laughs> but I had a, a brief foray into that and this is one of the fruits of that. This was also one of my earlier knits. This was my first, was it my first time doing brioche? I can't 
can't remember if I knit this before I knit my Wet the Fade or after, but this was definitely one of my first brioche knits. This is the Half Moon Oracle Shawl by Kristen Lehair. And she had originally designed this actually in a whole pie shawl, so like a complete circle. Um, but many people, including myself, <laughs> did not want to knit that. So she came up with a half moon version. And this is that. Again, this was a situation where I made my eye cord too tight. And I could not get the shawl to its full size. But it's still really beautiful. I think this was one of my first, like more co slightly complicated laces as well. I remember having to rip back a lot from lots of mistakes, but very pretty. I almost feel like I would knit this one again. Now that I know how to keep an eye cord looser, I think it would be a fun knit because I would be able to get it like to have a larger wingspan because right now this isn't even the way I'm holding it isn't even my full wingspan but it's very pretty. This also, oh no, it doesn't have a Pico edge. I thought it did. I've definitely knit a lot of shawls with Pico edges. That or I-cord. Next up, this I knit last year, I think. I had a lot of fun with this one. This is Brioche and Mystery by Suzanne Summer. I mostly knit this one because it has a really unique construction. So you start, I'm trying to remember, I can't remember if you start at this point here. Anyways, that triangle at the top, you knit sideways, and then you pick up stitches all the way around the edge of it to create the rest of the shawl. I just feel like it was such a neat use of color. This was like one of my first times doing slightly more complicated brioche as well. So you've got that brioche there. This is a little bit harder to see, but this is brioche and the edge of the shawl is brioche as well. And then I did pick up and knit a whole applied eye cord around the whole edge of this shawl, which took ages, but I do think it really finished it off nicely with that bright pop of blue around all the edges. It's got some beautiful baubles on it as well. Yeah, this was, this was a fun knit. It definitely took a long time because the whole thing is basically brioche minus a couple little sections of garter here and there. But yeah, it was a fun knit. We have three left. So here's my What the Fade. This was, I think this is the only mystery knit along that Andrea Mowry has ever done. Um, I don't know what the front and the back of this is. I do believe it was made to be reversible. But it is huge and it's very bright. I do know I got this kit from um, Hedgehog Fibers when I joined in on the knit along. This is the first knit along, mystery knit along I'd ever done. It did make me learn I'm not really a mystery knit along person, but it was still fun. This was the first time I had ever done brioche as well. Yes, I'm positive I knit this one before I knit the Half Moon Oracle. If, if I didn't, this is still definitely one of my first forays into brioche. And then it just has a garter fade around the edges. So yeah, I don't know. I think I ended up saying this was the front of it, but I'm not 100% sure. Both sides are very pretty though. This here was another design of mine. This is called the Sweet Dahlia Shawl. It's knit out of Sugar Plum Circus yarn. Again, I cannot remember the colorways, but it's just a smaller shawl. Nice and cozy. It's mostly garter and then a little bit of this simple lace. Some striping, nothing crazy, but pretty. And finally, something else I haven't wove the ends in on. This is the Bobble Shawl by Andrea Mowry. Another brioche shawl. 
I don't know why I never wove the ends in on this. I think partially because I hated the bobbles. I'm holding this backwards. <laughs> um, I hated the bobbles. Something about, I hadn't learned how to knit bobbles um, in a way that kept them not from sinking into the fabric. And I think the fact that the bobbles were also in brioche made them sink into the fabric really bad. So I was a little upset about that. I also remember it's such an odd shape. It's a very long, skinny triangle. And I think I had a hard time figuring out how I would even style it. So I just never wove in the ends. And will I ever weave them in now? Likely not. Um, but I do love it. I love the colors I chose. I do know some of this yarn is left over from a sweater I knit. I couldn't tell you the dis or the dyer of it. And then I think the other two shades in here, the purple and the blue are from Dragon Horde yarn, if I remember correctly. Again, I don't know if I was podcasting yet when I, no, I must have been. Because I started this when we lived in California and I remember blocking it on the floor in this house. So I must have been podcasting, but I do remember it getting a little tedious. Um, no, I was holding it the right way. Why do the bobbles look so weird? Hmm. Okay, this is the right way. Um, I do remember the stripes becoming really tedious and getting really bored of them. And I do remember even the brioche getting a little bit bored of. There's just not tons of interesting stuff other than the lace. And then of course, when you get to this really pretty border, that was fun, but yeah, that is my bubble shawl. So there we have it. There's my huge stack of shawls that I've knit. Like I said, any questions, please leave them down below in the comments and I can try my best to answer them for you. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was a little bit something different and a little bit fun to watch. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. It helps out the channel a lot. You can also hit the like button and the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And I will see you next Tuesday for a regular podcast episode. Bye!